Okay guys, seriously, this is like my fifth time recording this. First time I forgot audio, then I forgot the video, and then the video was covering everything. It's all terrible. This is rough. My name's Jay Wilson. I am a technical success manager at Domo, and while we're on like coronavirus lockdown, I'm here um, trying to answer your questions on the Domo Dojo. If you've never used a Domo Dojo before, check it out. Um, it's a great opportunity for technical developers and people like you to reach out to the community around the world who are answering and asking questions similar to yours. Um, user 14700 had an interesting question, uh, mainly, how can I group multiple columns by year month in a data flow? Their goal is to create a simple moving average calculation. Now again, what I love about the dojo is like, is this same day response? Same day, within minutes. <laughs> well, within an hour, uh, Mark comes back with this beautiful solution, well-documented, complete with visuals, um, where he does the solution using Magic ETL. Here I come days later. I wanted to throw my hat in the ring because I wanted to um, show you how you could build the same solution but without using Magic ETL. And the reason why not using Magic ETL was important to me was because, let's imagine you had other columns like um, item or country and you said, oh, right now I want to see my rolling average across all items, but I, na later I'll want to see it by just this item or this item sales in that country. If you're um, if your rolling average, if your aggregate numbers are hard coded into the data set, it won't respond to those filters. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at using window functions in the uh, in a beast mode to to um, answer these questions. It's going to be fun, I promise. Even though I've recorded this five times, just get it right the first time, Jay. So here's my data set, right? Um, I've added a column for item. I've got item A and I've got item B. Um, and then I've got my measure. Let's go build a card. As you know, anytime I do something like this, I like to start with a table card just to make sure my data is doing what I think it should be doing. Um, and table cards are the best way to get that feedback. I'm going to take out the graph by, OK. So I've got items, measure, and dates. For now, I'm going to ignore items. And um, instead of doing a group by year month, I'm going to make one row per week. So it'll look something like date, year, week. And to get that, we're going to do the year of date, 2020. We're going to multiply that by 100 and then add the week of year. Yeah, something like that. Let's see what that looks like. 2020-01, week 2, week 3, week 4, I drop the date and then I end up with like, I'm making up a number, 27 rows. And I'm taking the sum of them out. Perfect. Okay, question number one. How do I create a windowed function? Um, I've already done a long video about windowed functions, so I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Um, but the windowed function is going to be crucial to, um, to delivering this project. So what this says is it says, give me the sum of measure. Right, that's your basic measure. That's the basic part, right? And so for if I just had sum of measure, that would give me, for each week, I would have the sum of the amount. But when I apply the window function, because there's nothing in the over clause, it says my window is my entire data set. And so the sum, sum, measure over should be the grand total. I'm doing a terrible job explaining this, but I hope you're still with me. So just eyeballing it, 1231, the numbers are all the same, perfect, and uh, the amount, yeah, let's just say that checks out, cool. 
Now again, what I like about windowed function, what I like about this aggregation, I can filter by item B and my grand total changes. Beautiful. Let's see if I can take measure one and cross the window or in my window, take the next row. So that's going to be, I'm lazy. That's going to be my grand total. And I'll say, take the lead. Now, you know, say it in layman's English. What do I want? I want the next row, but in the window of like all 27 weeks, how do you know what the next row is? In SQL parlance, they'd say, you need to have a deterministic result. You need to guarantee that you always process the question the same way, that you get the same answer every time. In other words, you need an order by clause. That was a really long way of saying you need an order by clause. In this case, we are ordering our data by the axis um, in, our, in our underlying chart, right? In my underlying chart, I have one row per week, so I need to order by one row per week. I cannot order by year. This would not yield a determ deterministic result because if I have like 52 weeks in a year and I have one year, I don't have a unique sort order. I don't have a, a deterministic sort order. So that's why we're um, ordering by the, the same value that's on the axis. Let's see. Please work. Let's see how that looks. Hey, -o. for week one, 2399, that's the value in week two. And for week two, I got the value in week three. So I'm getting the future row, I want the previous row. So instead of doing a lead, I'll do a lag. Does that check out? Looks beautiful. Now this looks good, except for I want to highlight a little problem right here. Look at that. Now in uh, in strict SQL terms, uh, SQL is doing exactly what I told it to. I told it to get the lag or get the previous row or next row, however you want to define it. The problem is, logically, I know between week six and week eight, there's supposed to be a week seven, but it's not represented in my data. Logically, I want there to, I want there to be a row that says 202007 with a zero. But again, that doesn't exist in my data. So the solution I'm building for you will not accommodate gaps in your data. That said, there is a trick that you could implement that would um, basically fill that empty row, just put in template data, which is actually something I blogged about in another post. The short version of the story is check out my YouTube channel. All right, all right. Anyway, so we're not gonna we're not gonna adjust for the six and eight. But what I really am excited about again is if I filter on A, I now have the rolling, or I have the lag for a different item. It does still respond for filters, and that's a big difference between my solution and the previously proposed solution. Moving on. Ooh, that says lead. That's supposed to say lag. Okay. Now, what you might not know is the lag function or the lead function, both of them, actually accept two arguments. The first argument is the expression. So what do you want to lag? And the second argument is how many rows in your window do you want to lag? And the default value is one, but if I put an explicit two, let's see what happens. Right away, you can see, yep, it checks out. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. I love it. We're almost done. If I can lag one or I could lag two, surely I could modify this function to give me my rolling average. 
So take lag one, add lag two, and divide it by three. Hmm, let's say this is average lag three. So just quickly eyeballing this, does that check out? 45 plus one plus 40 averages to 30. I'm terrible at math. Let's, yeah, 90. 90 divided by 330. Yeah, 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 that checks out. And if I look at the next row, again, slightly lower than 90. So yeah, that works. Again, the thing to be excited about is because I didn't do this in ETL, um, my lag functions respond to filters. So. User 14700, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I, I built a solution that would allow you to do your simple moving average calculation. The only problem we have is that it doesn't accommodate for cases where what happens if I am, have a missing week. Again, the solution there is to fill your data with a template row, basically you know, the first day in week seven where the amount is zero, and that way you would have an empty row. My name is Jay Wilson. I'm a technical success manager over at Domo. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on the dojo. Post, continue to post your questions on the dojo. And if you want me to take a look and maybe do a video, um, at message me or send me an email at jae.wilson.domo.com. Thanks so much, guys. Catch you later.